You are leading the Amazon Future Engineer Program, your main computer science initiative to help kids from childhood to career develop the skills they need to succeed in the tech industry. Why is Amazon doing this? Amazon Future Engineer is a comprehensive program and really is an opportunity to meet kids uh, of all ages where they are and help them build the skills uh, that they need in order to continue in computer science and then hopefully to engage in a career that integrates technology into whatever field they choose to pursue. So you're offering a scholarship and the winners actually get an internship at Amazon, which is a pretty huge opportunity. How many of those people do you think will become full-time employees, or what do you hope? Well, well we, ho we hope that all 100 of them become full-time employees, but um, what's most important to us is increasing the pipeline of students that pursue computer science, because that benefits um, not just Amazon, but the entire tech community uh, at large. So how are you benchmarking yourself? What will be a measure of success? So we look at a number of things. We, there's the regular feedback on the program that we solicit from both participants and teachers. And then at the, um, at the high school level, we look at uh, how many students actually take and pass the advanced placement tests. And then for those who receive scholarships, we look at the scholarship renewal rate, which tells us that they're, they're continuing in computer science. And, uh, whether, and then for the interns, whether they choose to return to Amazon or not at the end of that first year, we look at whether they get an invitation back, because that also tells us that they're strong candidates and making good progress in the field. Now, you've been instrumental in starting to staff up HQ2 and focusing on the D.C., Northern Virginia area. When Amazon set up shop in Seattle originally, it didn't do programs like this. And we sort of saw the relationship between Amazon and the Seattle community suffer. You know, what are you doing to engage more productively with the community in Arlington to build a better relationship from the start? That's a great question. I think the nice piece about uh, Arlington is we have a, a view to the flight path. We know that we're going to hire 25,000 employees over the next 10 years. And what that tells us is that um, we know what, that there are kids in school today um, that we'd love to get interested in computer science so that they can, in fact, progress and, and join the ranks of those college students that attain tech degrees. And we're excited to be here in Arlington and engaging with the community to learn more about the great programs that exist here now and where we can put our shoulder to the wheel uh, and help improve things for, uh, for the community at large. So you've promised to add 25,000 employees there in a decade. What's the pace of hiring so far? Are you finding the skills that you need? The first year is, uh, is, is, is relatively modest. We'll hire 400 folks this year, and that's really um, so that the construction can, can, be, can begin uh, on the site. And so far, um, we've had a fantastic response from the community uh, and have had the opportunity to interview great talent. Uh, talent is the number one reason that brought us to, uh, to National Landing, and we're excited to be here in the community. Now, in doing all this hiring, you have an opportunity to change the profile of the company. About three quarters of Amazon's managers are men. You don't report the percentage of women who hold technical jobs, but the rest of the tech industry is at about 20 percent, so not even close to 50-50. How will this program change that? So this is, you're absolutely right, this is a great opportunity for us to change the profile uh, of folks who work in tech. And key to that is really impacting the pipeline. We know that uh, within STEM, so science, technology, engineering, and math, fewer than 8% of that population actually pursue degrees in computer science. And a fraction of that 8% are women and people of color. And so by creating programs like Amazon Future Engineer, which expose students early in their education to computer science and make it something that they can see and understand and something that's inviting provides the opportunity to make that pipeline richer, to invite more women and people of color into it, which ultimately helps representation in the workforce. Now, I think some folks might look at Amazon and say, look, this is a company that revolutionized e-commerce, the cloud, grocery shopping. Jeff Bezos is now building rocket ships. How much of a priority is workplace diversity, given that you know, progress hasn't been made up to this point, to Jeff Bezos in particular? I think that um, we have obviously have an opportunity 
to do better. And this is something that we are committed to. We're taking the long view as we do uh, across other initiatives in the company, and that's really looking at not the short-term benefit of simply a hiring initiative, but how do we take a step back and look at what we can do, again, to increase the diversity of people studying computer science and related technical degrees. Now, you're in D.C., and of course, uh, Amazon has been a hot topic on Capitol Hill. President Trump has taken shots at Amazon. There's increasing scrutiny from lawmakers. Given that you're staffing up, do we accept, should we expect that you'll be staffing up your policy shop as well? Um, the, policy, the policy shop uh, in Washington, D.C. isn't growing dramatically right now. Um, and I think that rather than responding to individual, uh, kind of individual uh, comments or questions, we do take the long view and focus on what's best for our customers. Okay, well, speaking of the long view, the FTC and the DOJ have opened antitrust investigations into big tech. How much of a concern is that for you going forward, especially given that these investigations are going to take a long time? You know, I'm focused primarily on workforce development and what we're doing in the, both in the community and within higher ed to make sure that the workforce is skilled for the jobs of the future and really don't have insight into the, the antitrust situation. So given that you are staffing up HQ2 in Arlington, uh, you're also working on building out a new site in Nashville. You pulled out of New York City after pushback from local leaders there. Some of the folks that were bound for New York City, what happens to them and how, how's that plan panning out? So we already, um, we have a large presence in Manhattan already, about 5,000 corporate employees. And so there is still a presence there. Uh, we have a fulfillment center in Staten Island, uh, as well as other sites across the state. And so those businesses that are, uh, that were already in New York will continue to grow organically there.